All right, look, I think it's fair to say nobody was expecting what just happened. What's going on, guys? And last night was crazy. Potentially the best card of the year so far. I mean, you have the main event. Adesanya KOing Pereira cold. Jorge Masvidal retiring. Gilbert Burns getting a massive win. Possibly weighing in as a backup against Leon Edwards and Colby Covington. Rob Vaughn getting a massive knockout win. Raul Rosas Jr. losing. Tons and tons of fight news. I'm going to break down everything from the prelims, everything and all my thoughts. This fight card was... Was insane comment in the comment section below what you guys saw on a scale of 1 to 10 because i'm curious what was the best card of the year let me know in the comment section below favorite card of the year thus far and before we get into this video i want you guys to hear a word from our sponsor all right you know it's a good day when we have a sponsor the sponsor of today's video is actually a sponsor i'm super excited to work with is Aret. Aret is a streetwear brand from the uk that is designs inspired by mixed martial arts they have designs inspired by fighters like darren till patty pimblett and so much more the people over there were nice enough to send me a hoodie of my own as you guys could see, you know, it says kill everybody. Like, seriously, I had no idea what these hoodies were going to look like, but I was insanely surprised. These hoodies look dope as hell. Look, if you guys want to go check out their designs, which I really suggest you guys do, go hit the link in the description and use code JACK10 to get 10% off of your order. That means you're going to help me as well as help yourself because you're going to get some dope ass merch while also getting a massive discount. But let's just get back into the video. All right, as always, when we do these recaps, let's talk about the prelims. Some highlights of the prelim. I got a few fights wrong and I was pretty confident. This was the first time I predicted the full card i thought i was gonna have a w moment i thought a lot of these fights were going to happen turns out most of these fights i was wrong with some highlights chris curtis losing calvin gaslam getting in the win column good for him shylin nerdebecki losing after nearly ko'ing steve garcia in the first round ufc prospect jacqueline amarim loses her ufc debut loses her undefeated record i was super excited for her debut had all first round submissions and a first round tko actually lost her debut but it is what it is sometimes you're wrong i did kind of predict how the fight was gonna go i said the first round was gonna be dominant from jacqueline second round was going to be close and the third round was gonna go from sam hughes but she just gassed out in the second joe pyfer once again being joe pyfer knocking out gm3 i don't think anybody expected that fight to go that way i thought it was gonna go to a decision that joe pyfer was going to be dominant but i thought it was gonna go to a decision i thought there were gonna be some close calls the prelims were just a small small appetizer because now let's get to the main card all right raul rosas jr as i said look guys christian rodriguez is legit and i have so much to talk about about this fight because there's a lot of misconception. If you guys don't know, Raul Rosa Jr. lost and it was mainly because of his pace. It wasn't a cardio issue. I'm going to get to that after. Now in the first round, Raul Rosa Jr. just thought he was Hamza Chamaev, decided to go for the takedown, trying to just submit Christian Rodriguez right in the first round, but you're not going to be able to do that to a guy like Christian Rodriguez. He has a little more experience than Raul Rosa Jr. He knows not to expand his energy so much. Raul Rosa Jr. after that round was just gassed, you could tell. Christian Rodriguez dominated the second and third round. And to me, look, a lot of people are shitting on him saying oh he wasn't as good as he was supposed to be at the end of the day the guy is 18 years old you guys have to remember this most of your favorite fighters that were 18 had these terrible fights at local mma promotions not in front of a sold out crowd so let's relax on the hate he's going to learn i promise you guys he'll be back nothing but respect to that guy you know definitely don't hate there's too much hate on this guy on the internet it wasn't a cardio issue it was a pacing issue and that's going to get better with the experience so i think you should fight you know someone a little below christian rodriguez because that was a massive jump not too many people knew who he was but he was a legit test like he was a good fighter well is a good fighter i guess and as far as the other fights go kevin hall and santiago ponzinibbio was a little bit closer than i anticipated santiago did use those low leg kicks but kevin holland caught him in the last round big right hand ponzinibbio fell face first looked like he was out cold but then he got up right away definitely was not an early stoppage in my opinion don't think santiago ponzinibbio has anything to complain about but it is what it is obviously emotions are going to be high and for kevin holland man i really hope he fights jorge masvidal next we're going to talk about then the Jorge Masvidal section of the video and why I don't think he should retire but if not JDM's a fun fight Vicente Luque I don't know if he's matched up with anybody I definitely want to see Kevin Holland fight a lower ranked welterweight let's get this guy climbing into the division the more traditional way like let's not just jump into a Hamzad or Steven Thompson let's get him an unranked guy let's actually give him the right treatment and don't think we're gonna miss this Rob Font knockout because holy shit he is jabbed sent Adrian Yana's chin to another dimension every time that thing hit I was just cringing it was this 
big right uppercut slash left hook that just put Giannis out. And at the end of the day, look, similar to Raul Rosas Jr., he is new to this scene. This is his highest ranked opponent he's ever faced. He fought last Tom Kelly, who's not even in the UFC anymore. Maybe he fights a guy like Jonathan Martinez. Maybe Saeed Namagamadoff, who's coming off of a loss. Those are hard matchups for him, in my opinion, but we'll see how the fight goes. Bantamweight is so stacked, so it's hard to give him an easy matchup, but I think there was definitely a better way than just pairing him up with Rob Font. There definitely is another matchup, but Rob Font proves not to be done. I wouldn't mind seeing him versus Marab because I wonder how the jab will work against Marab because I don't think Marab's going to be able to go so forward with a big stiff jab in his face. All right, that just sounded wrong. Why am I talking about big stiff things in Marab's face? But that concludes everything up to the featured bout and we go to the co-main event. But first, I just want to remind you guys, look, sponsor today's video is a red. And honestly, like I said, I fuck with these hoodies so much. I mean, this hoodie is fire. So many other fire hoodies. Just remember, go click the link in the description, code Jack 10. Go check them out. I highly suggest it. All right, co-main event, Jorge Masvidal, Gilbert Burns. And I think a lot of people knew him going in this one. Gilbert Burns was going to win. The question was how. I thought he was going to win by finish. I thought once he got Jorge on the ground, it'd be easy to just submit him. But looking back on it, look, Gilbert did have Stephen Wonderboy Thompson on the ground and couldn't finish him. Similar to that, he, he couldn't finish Jorge Masvidal. First round was pretty close. I think Gilbert tried to test his stand-up ability, landed a few good right hands, really tried to land a similar shot to Kamaru Usman, using the lead hook to open up the guard of Jorge to land that right hand. That's actually the only other knockout other than Kamaru Usman Jorge Masvidal suffered was that exact shot. So it's a shot that Masvidal has suffered with time and time again, clearly still suffering with. Gilbert almost had him out of there later in the fight with that shot. But then round two, Gilbert Burns clearly was like, hey, I'm going to wrestle. Clearly felt that he was much stronger than Jorge Masvidal. I'll grapple him in the second round. And then you get to the third round and he was just battering Jorge Masvidal, landing massive shots, clearly rocking Jorge Masvidal. And the fight ends and sadly, what Jorge Masvidal was kind of alluding to this whole week, he retired. And I think this is a massive mistake. At the end of the day, Jorge Masvidal lost to one, two, and three in a row. He lost to Kobe, Usman, Gilbert Burns. Like, these are the top dudes in the division. Don't think it's time to retire yet. I think he should do another BMF type fight. Baddest motherfucker belt on the line. One last time for the good time. Kevin Holland, maybe, in him. And the thing is, is look, maybe I'll do a separate video on this, but I do not think Jorge Masvidal is going to retire simply because the UFC is not going to let him out of this contract. His contract is not up. He still has five fights. And in some situations, Yes, like if you look at Jose Aldo, he had one fight left. The UFC let him off to do boxing. UFC has done that, but they are not going to do that to a superstar of this magnitude. They will not let Jorge Masvidal go. If you don't believe me, look two years ago when GSP wanted out of his UFC contract. Yes, in 2021 to fight Oscar De La Hoya. He didn't fight Oscar De La Hoya because the UFC did not want him out of the contract. Same thing is going to happen to Jorge Masvidal. I guarantee he's going to want to do some sort of boxing outside of MMA, whether that be box Jake Paul or someone else. The UFC is not going to let him do that. As much as Dana in the press conference is going to say, yeah, I'm happy for him, have fun in retirement, they're not going to let him retire peacefully. I think we'll definitely see Jorge Masvidal back. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him by the end of the year back, but my guess is we'll see him within the next few years. And to me, make the Kevin Holland fight and make it in June. Let that headline the pay-per-view instead of that trash they're currently serving. And as far as Gilbert Burns go, have him weigh in as the backup. That's the thing that makes sense. Or have him fight Gilbert Burns. The winner of that fight, the winner of Leon Colby. That's what makes sense to me. And then maybe those two matchups meet up at the end of the year we'll see but this fight was fun i mean i was hoping it'd be a little more exciting but nonetheless i still found it very enjoyable i'm hoping jorge masvidal has a few fights left in him i think there's still some fun fights even a conor mcgregor fight that is still very much on the table there's a lot of fun fights left for him i don't think it's time for him to just pack it up and say he's done jorge's just being too hard on himself jorge was never truly one of those guys that was going to be champion he never was a guy taking out top contenders i think maybe jorge has deluded himself into thinking that but he hasn't been he's always been a mid-tier guy so it's no surprise he's losing to these guys honestly it's fine a lot of people have lost to gilbert burns think you should stay in the game reconsider and maybe have some fun matchups right now you could do a wonder boy rematch a kevin holland fight and a conor mcgregor fight those are three fights that are fun he's getting paid like 1.5 million per fight plus pay-per-view you could make a lot of money and even if you lose them who cares you're still making the money and they're all winnable fights for masvidal so i wouldn't be surprised to see him reconsider i think the ufc will try to talk him into it all right but the main event i think what a lot of you guys are here for israel adesanya alex Pro. Alex Pereira wins. I was right. My prediction was right. All right, we're done with the video. No, as you guys know, 
I was wrong. I was so confident Alex Pereira was going to win. And it looked like at the first round, I thought Adesanya won clearly. Adesanya fixed a lot of the mistakes he made in the last fight. Moving forward, I thought he used a lot more leg kicks against Alex Pereira. Was a lot more active than we've ever seen him as a champion. So I thought he clearly won the round because Alex Pereira didn't really do that much in the first round. Then in the second round, Alex Pereira started landing some shots, being a little more aggressive, landing the right hand early, pushing him against the fence, landing a stiff jab. And it was starting to spell like the end of that fifth round, all the way back at MSG. And it was, I mean, we saw that Adesanya was backed up, getting hit with shots, got hit with a left hook, hit with a big knee, and then boom, Adesanya hits him with a big right hand and flatlines Alex Pereira. I mean, Alex was just out cold. And look, for a lot of you guys saying that Alex has no chin, he has a glass chin, I think we have to consider the weight cut. The weight cut was a massive weight cut. I'm not trying to take anything away from Izzy, but that could have played a factor in things. Although I will say Izzy did hurt him with that same shot in the first fight, or the first MMA fight, I should say. But what all I'm trying to say is I don't think this hurts Alex's chances at 205. I really still want to see him against Jamal Hill. And as far as if we'll get a trilogy fight in MMA between these two, to me, it makes sense. There's nobody else in the middleweight division that Adesanya is going to fight. I think they should make Costa Hamza and the winner of that fight's Adesanya. But right now, there's no contenders. However, I'm fine if they don't because I think Pereira is just too big for the weight class. Here is my suggestion. I think Pereira moves up to 205, fights Jamal Hill, and if he wins against Jamal Hill, Adesanya is the champion. What if we have Adesanya go up once again, trying to become a double champion? champion to fight Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira up a weight class. Adesanya not only gets a chance to beat him once again, but to get two belts at the same time. Because keep in mind, yes, on paper, Israel is still one and three against Alex. The first fight in kickboxing was pretty much a robber. So really, there's an argument to be said that they're 2-2, two -two, and this could be the final fight to decide who is better. But that's just my thoughts. I think that would be pretty interesting. Kind of sounds like a fairy tale. There's a lot of what ifs. We'd still have to assume that Izzy's even still the champ. Who knows? Look, either way, I was pretty surprise Israel won. I thought he was going to get knocked out a lot earlier, but wow, he put out Alex Cole. Let me know what you guys thought of this whole card. This card was awesome. Once again, thank the guys at Arette for sponsoring the video. Go click the link in the description and show some support to me and them. Use code JACK10 to get 10% off. There's some amazing hoodies, and I'm not just saying it because I'm sponsored. These are actually some cool hoodies. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the support. Comment in the comment section below where this card ranked out of all the cards so far this year, and I'll see you guys in the next one.